What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to transform a boring concrete garage floor from this into this. Let's get straight into it guys. Let's do this. All right guys, so we've got a standard double garage here on a brand new home. What we're gonna be doing is epoxy flake system through this garage here to give it a nice covering that's also gonna protect it. So the absolute first thing that we need to do is just a little bit of prep work. Um, the first thing we're gonna be looking at doing is removing any high spots. So anywhere there's little bits of mortar or cement, that is still on the floor. This one here, like I said, is new construction. So there's just a little bit of um, mess that we need to clean up. We're gonna take a big scraper like this and just simply go over the top and remove any of those high spots. Once again, any high spots, go straight over the top and they'll come off really nice and easy. Once we've got that one there done, any little divots that you've got in your concrete floor, so you can see here, We've got a couple little divots, little imperfections. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, um, but any cracks, divots, or holes that you've got in your concrete floor, you wanna also address those. I'll show you guys how to do that as well. But first things first, I need to quickly scrape this whole garage floor. So it's now time to fill in any of the holes, divots, or cracks that you might have in your concrete floor. I'm going to be using this uh, concrete bog right here, which is basically just a concrete filler that comes in two parts. You've got your resin and your hardener. This one here sets in about 10 minutes, um, but I'm going to give it about an hour or so to completely set. I'll come back, I'll sand it, and then we should be ready to go for our pressure washing. Luckily there's not that much patching that needs to be done here. So we take a little bit of our product here. Mix a little bit of hardener in through it. Mix that all through until it's nice and consistent. Apply it to the area, pretty nice and creamy at the moment. This will start to go hard pretty quick. When you apply it into the holes, make sure you go in a couple of different directions. Doesn't have to be 100% level. And we're gonna send that one there down nice and flat once again. We've got a couple of little small ones over here as well, nothing major. Now this doesn't have to be perfect simply because we're gonna be applying a base coat. We're applying flake over the top and then a top coat over that which is a polyurethane sealer. So I don't really need this to be 100%. So it's been about an hour and a half now, we're ready to sand. I'm gonna be using an angle grinder with a flat disc on there, so we've got 80 grit sandpaper ready to go. This should take only a couple seconds lightly over the top, just to slightly level it back out. Um, you can use an orbital sander, sanding block, floor sander, whatever you wanna use. Um, I'm feeling a little bit lazy, so I'm gonna be using this right now. Respirator ready to go, because this is gonna be a little bit dusty. Should only take a couple seconds. And you can see just how quick that all comes off. So I'm gonna quickly go around here, get all these um, patched up areas nicely sanded, and I'll see you guys in a bit. So once all the patchwork has been sanded, this is what it ends up looking like. We've got a nice level surface once again. If you've got cracks or holes in your concrete, you can apply the exact same process that I've just shown you guys. It's pretty simple and straightforward to do. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna acid wash the floor. So we're gonna be using hydrochloric acid, also known as muratic acid in some countries as well. The purpose of that is to simply open up the pores of the concrete. It's gonna get rid of that top milky uh, layer of concrete on top. Um, get rid of that, it's gonna open up the pores, which means we're gonna have a better adhesion. Now the product that we're using today 
is self-priming, but I'm gonna give it the absolute worst case scenario. I'm gonna make sure I overdo everything. I'm gonna be priming the floor, and I'm also acid etching the floor. You can use a concrete grinder to grind all this floor here. This one's in pretty good condition, so I'm sure we'll be fine just using um, acid etching until we get that nice rough surface. So at the moment, super smooth. We wanna make sure it binds on nicely to that concrete, get perfect adhesion. So we're gonna apply um, some hydrochloric acid. Now, if it's not rough enough on the first coat, we'll repeat the process until we're happy with the surface before we prime it and then start laying our epoxy. All right guys, so to use hydrochloric acid, like I said, make sure you wear a respirator. This stuff absolutely stinks and I'm sure it's doing damage to your lungs, so make sure you wear a respirator when it comes to this. Before I open it up, we want to use about 10 to 15% hydrochloric acid compared to our water. So that's the dilution rate, 10 to 15%. We've got nine liters here in our jerry can. We're gonna put in probably about a liter um, straight on top of here. Now, whenever you're mixing hydrochloric acid, make sure you add acid to the water and not water to the acid. Always follow the recommendations from the manufacturer, um, especially when working with chemicals or acid. Don't wanna make a mistake there. Okay, so I'm about to put my respirator on. We're basically gonna to top this one here up, apply it around on the concrete, um, and then it should start to bubble almost instantly. Once it starts to bubble, I'm gonna take a little broom that I've got here and just work into that concrete, making sure that we're getting that product all the way through this whole slab here. So I'm gonna quickly go through, mix it, pour it, scrub it down, and then we're gonna wash it down now. I'm gonna wash it down um, using a pressure washer. You can use a regular garden hose, just like this one here. Um, but the most important step is after we do our, our acid wash, we need to neutralize the acid. And that's probably the biggest mistake most people make. Um, that's gonna ruin your product later on. Neutralizing the acid is basically gonna get rid of that acid, stop it from doing its job. And what we're gonna be using to neutralize it is bicarbonated soda. So bicarb soda, baking soda, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna mix it, do the exact same process as we're doing with the hydrochloric acid and neutralize it. I'll show you guys in a second how we do that. But the reason why we do that is when the acid dries, if it's not completely neutral, uh, neutralized, it ends up leaving a white film of basically dust on your concrete. Sometimes you can't see it, sometimes you can, it might look like it's just discolored. And what you wanna do is avoid that. So we need to make sure we wash it properly and neutralize it. Otherwise that is gonna prevent your top coat, whether it's paint, sealer, um, or epoxy from sticking to the concrete. So hopefully I haven't bored you guys very much and you haven't skipped through because that is a very, very important section. I'll quickly put on my mask now, stop my talking. So if you listen and you see, that's the chemical reaction right there. So the concrete's been drying for about four days now. It's completely dry. Make sure you do your moisture test to make sure there's no moisture in the concrete. We're gonna be applying our primer today. And the primer that we're using is this one here called Aqua Prime from Right Choice. All the epoxy products that I'm using today is from Right Choice. With a name like that, they can't get it wrong. So that's the um, Aqua Prime that we're using. It's one part Aqua Prime to nine parts water. So four and a half liters is what I'm mixing up um, to half a liter. Now we've got everything taped off just in case we get a little bit of extra splatter. That little lip there of concrete is also gonna be applied with epoxy and primer. 
Now what you want to do on the garage roller door, it's up to you, you can mark up the inside, the outside or in the middle. I personally prefer to do the inside um, and all you need to do at this point is just take a pencil, mark that one up like that and we're going to tape up to that line. So I'm going to quickly mark this one here up, tape it off, start mixing my primer, then we're going to cut in and roll in our primer. It only needs one coat and it should only take a couple of hours to dry. So once the primer is dry, it's time for the epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy. So we've got our part A and part B. Now we're gonna put in part A into the bucket, mix that up for about a minute or two. Then we're gonna pour in part B while we're still mixing and mix that for another two minutes. Um, I've got my roller and brush just for cutting around the edges. We've got a squeegee because we're time uh, poor in this case here because we've got only a certain amount of time to get this all on the floor and spread our epoxy out. Um, we've probably got about 20 to 30 minutes with this one here working time. So we're going to quickly cut in all these edges, squeegee all the product out to the side um, or just distribute it anyway. We're going to roll it all out over the top and then come back through with spike shoes and apply our epoxy flake. And once that's done, we'll let it dry for 24 hours, come back and we'll put our clear polyurethane coat. Alright guys, so we're back now the following morning and we're ready to start scraping off all the excess flakes that are on the floor. The only thing that I didn't show you guys is peeling off the tape. I peeled off the tape at probably about 30 minutes after applying my uh, flakes and the reason why I did that is I didn't want it to bridge up against um, the tape and then give me a tough time removing it. So I'm going to have to reapply the tape for our polyurethane sealer. Now the sealer that we're applying is just a clear coat over the top. That's basically going to give it all its strength and durability. Durability. It's going to protect the floor, seal everything in, um, but what we don't want is any flakes sitting up high. So you can see there, there's flakes all around that are sitting up high. So what we need to do is take our scraper and we're just going to go in a couple different directions. So we're going to go running one way, then we're going to run across the other way, just scraping off all those high spots. Same thing on the edges there. Um, remove all of those, then we're going to blow everything to one corner. I'm going to try and collect as much of the product as possible and I'll put it into a bucket, that way it can be reused for another project um, and anything else that's minor laying around, I'm just going to vacuum it up. So I'm going to get started on that. Alright guys, time for the final step now. We're going to apply two coats of polyurethane sealer. We're going to mix it in the exact same process that we did the epoxy. Um, part A, part B, mix part A through, add part B, mix it for another couple of minutes, pour it out in ribbons and we're also going to be cutting in all these edges. Now the flooring is looking pretty good now, I'm very very happy with the results so far. Um, the cleanup process was probably the longest part and most difficult part, trying to get rid of all those loose flakes from the floor, um, vacuuming it, blowing it and scraping all the floor. So that's all finally done. Let's get straight into mixing this one here up. And once the floor is done, this here is the finished product. I'm super happy with the finish. The color is unreal. The flakes that we used here was called granite. Nice and solid, it's been about 48 hours. You need to leave it about seven to 14 days to fully cure uh, before you can drive on it. But in my case, this is gonna be used all for storage. 
nice shiny surface that's smooth so that means any spillage that we get on here we can simply wipe it away and clean that mess there up but you won't get a result like this by simply using a color sealer or painting the floor really really happy with that couple tips that I learnt along the way first and foremost mask up any areas that you don't want to mess on you can see here on the edge of the brick we've gone up a little bit too high in a few areas um, I probably should have masked that one there up not too concerned but because I am putting racking all along here and that'll all be covered and I might even fill in and sheet up all this bricked area here anyway so for me it's not that big of a deal when doing a single garage you can probably do it on your own a double garage or a two car garage a second set of hands would definitely come in very very handy especially because this is all time sensitive so you need to get the epoxy down the uh, polyurethane coat down and you've only got a certain amount of time to get it all out rolled out and nice and smooth and flat before it starts to become tacky and no longer workable um, so a second set of hands is definitely something that you need to look into if you've got a larger project but it's pretty simple and straightforward you just follow the manufacturer's directions and you get a nice finish just like this awesome little weekend project for anybody that wants to convert their flooring hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video you've learned something new as always guys like comment and subscribe until next time I'm Bill thanks for watching Bill's How To